And you're listening to the sexiest podcast on the internet. Two strangers, one podcast. Subscribe to us on iTunes. Just search for Two Strangers, One Podcast. For Android users, we are also available on the Stitcher app and the Play Store for Google. Okay, hello and welcome to the Yetu named uh, podcast. I'm Chris. And, and I'm Kristen. And basically, uh, you know, every every podcast got to have its gimmick. Um, Kristen and I actually met for the first time today face-to-face. Um, basically, Kristen put up a, a ad on... A, creepy Craigslist. <laughs> creepy Craigslist. And I luckily wasn't one of the, uh, the, the stalkers who collect uh, human skin. So far, we'll see. <laughs> this is our fir- only our first meeting, so... Yeah, we met for the first time. We kind of went back and forth with emails and, and text messages and so the the idea I would like to think about this podcast is that it's actually two people who never met each other. We're not friends. Uh, or, I mean, maybe we will be. <laughs> um, Hopefully, right? And we were just meeting for the first time. So, you know, it's uh, let's take it from here and let's see where it goes. Um, and I'm just going to start from the top. Uh, we're recording this today on the 19th of April. Tomorrow being 420. Get ready, everyone. Yeah, it's the big uh, the big uh, pot <laughs> 4-2-0. holiday. 420, man. You gotta get the, you gotta get the uh, you gotta get the special brownies, man. Oh, those are good. <laughs> those are always I, good. You know what? For a good time. I never I never had pot brownies before. Really? In my life. I, I I've yeah, always those wanted. Are, yeah, they last a while too, so it's always a good night. It's not. No, you're just you're out of it for a whole night. Because <laughs> wouldn't that be like a it, it's a self defeating system? Because you eat a brownie and you're high, then you want to eat another. brownie. Well, right, and then you just it's just a cycle, <laughs> just a bad cycle. I, you know, because uh, I used to work with this Jamaican guy. He was an older guy, and that's what blew my mind because he was a pastor, <laughs> and and yeah, he was a pastor Very peaceful uh, on his on his on Sundays, and he would tell me that in Jamaica they actually had marijuana tea. And I, said, I can't get on board. With I was that. like, "That sounds fucking <laughs> awesome," you know, like, uh, you know. And then, and then he said, "You take marijuana tea and you put rum in it." So I was like, "Oh my god, that sounds so awesome!" Husband right there. <laughs> and and I was like. You know, it blew my mind, and and actually, is the marijuana in the tea bag? The marijuana, is that what's you, going on? you you seep, and then you the seep marijuana leaves there. like you would seep. So seep. we could could do that ourselves. It's, it <laughs> sounds awesome, but I don't. I mean, maybe I don't know if there's a special trick to it. I don't know if we gotta, you know, seep it for so long. See, yeah, you know, I, I want to do it right if I'm gonna do it anyway. Um, dead air. Um, <laughs> and um, they use Jamaican rum. Jamaican of rum. Course. Now, I went. I when I was a kid, I went to Jamaica, and it was it was definitely an eye opening experience because my father wanted to save a couple dollars, <laughs> and we stood at like the cheapest hotel. <laughs> it was called Inn on the Beach. Beautiful. Oh That's my exotic. god! And let me tell you, you know, In pe- it was the poor part of the <laughs> island, and these people would come, and they saw you. They would see you coming, like if you were driving in a car and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And like when you got out, like you would stop at a restaurant or stop at any place, these people would bum rush the car and try to sell you stuff. Oh, okay. You know, for and, what? You know, and they would they would um, take the car, <laughs> <laughs> take the car. And and uh, well, the funny thing was is that you know my father trying to give us like this authentic Jamaican experience <laughs> hired a homeless guy. This guy, his nickname was Yellow Man. Beautiful. And because like um. He was half Chinese, half Jamaican. Oh, there you go. And Yellow Man, um, which I guess apparently there's a famous. I mean, they called him Yellow Man because there was a there's a famous reggae singer called Ye- Yellow Man in Jamaica. Oh, okay. So this guy who stunk to high heaven, you know, my father's getting he him was t- homeless. Uh, yeah, homeless guy. My father's giving him twenty dollars a day, which at that time the rate was five American dollars to. I mean, one American dollar to five Jamaican dollars. So oh, my I'm- father's basically giving this guy a hundred dollars a day. He's to be our tour on guy, on cloud nine. Yeah, and you know, and 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 um, well, it's funny. Like speaking about Jamaica and stuff like that, I'm pretty sure he took my father to go get high because <laughs> he disappeared one afternoon with <laughs> my dad. Had tea, right? And <laughs> and so I I some I forgot how, but I end up meeting up with my dad later on. Now my father is with Yellow Man in this <laughs> Jamaican uh, record friend. shop. Yeah. It's a record shop with speakers from the floor to the ceiling, blasting reggae music. And my father's like, come on, dance. And I'm like, I don't want to dance. And he's like, dance. <laughs> dance for me. The and, real ju- and he has his arm ju- around me like, come on, let's dance. And my father has the, the, the uh, red, green, and yellow knit cap mm-hmm. on. It was, was like, With the fake dreads coming with out. With the fake dreads. <laughs> which he still has to this right. day, mind you. Real Jamaican experience there. 
<laughs> and so I, I definitely remember uh, going to Jamaica. Going, and like I said, the people would they would bum rush your car, right. and they had. Anything that they can sell you, they would sell you. It's like those little Mexican children. You go to Mexico there, and they have the chiclet. Yeah, the chiclet. <laughs> chiclet, chiclet. I don't want senor, that. Senor. <laughs> the bracelets that they make. And the balloons and yeah. the, the, the inflatable <laughs> toys. I was on the beach once in Acapulco. We went for spring break in uh-huh. college. They had donuts. It was so hot out. And they're on the beach <laughs> Here's some with fried donuts. Dough. <laughs> like, oh, that's the last thing I want. I'm trying to look good in my bathing suit, and you're trying to give me this hot glazed donut. Oh. <laughs> So gross. Oh, man. And, um, yeah, but I remember, like, literally, they would have a rock painted, like, the colors of the Jamaican <laughs> flag. Uh, and with, that's like, authentic. Right yeah, there. it was a, a painted Jamaica on it, you know, the word Jamaica. And, like, you know, they would try to sell you it, and it was crazy. Um, yeah, it was it was, it was was definitely an eye-opening experience and, and dealing with Yellow Man. And <laughs> so you went to Acapulco? Yes. Was, and, and, so, and we went on spring break. And when we got there... Uh-huh. We went through, like, this place. It's called, like, Student City to get your... It's a popular spring break thing. You go and get your inclusive package. Mm-hmm. And um, we get there. The day we arrived, The our, of course, our hotel, they had two towers. And one of the towers was burned. Like, a kid <laughs> threw... I guess a kid got really drunk, threw, like, lit a, a towel on fire and threw it down, like, the laundry chute. Burned, like, Holy four shit. stories. People were outside. It was chaos. People... Then, I guess, it was accused. I don't know if it was ever... Proven, mm-hmm. but the um, maids, I guess, who had to go up and clean or whatever they had to do, mm-hmm. took passports. Oh. Like people's passports were missing. Yeah, These it, are I gotta clean kids. a burnt up room. Yeah, I'm gonna take fucking passports <laughs> right? too. And so, I mean, people were everywhere. Thankfully, we did get a room when we got there on the other tower, but we could see it cross. And you see like Mardi Gras beads hanging out, I guess, and like towels tied. I guess that's how people were trying to get out of like. The two, but Holy nobody died, shit. so I don't know how serious it was with those beads. Uh-huh. That like, what are they going to hang from? There? <laughs> <laughs> but there was sheets like tied together. Oh and it was, my like, god! It was awful. Thank God people didn't die, but I mean, as soon as we arrived, we're like, "What's people yeah. are really partying?" But they still kind of <laughs> panic. People are greeting us, <laughs> and, and oh, I don't know if I'd put my faith in a like the Mexican uh, fire exactly. brigade or whatever it's called. <laughs> uh, they probably just let it die out. Like they're like, oh, "We can't go in yet." <laughs> Fuego, fuego. Um, could you imagine though? None of them had um, their passports to get home. I'm like, thank God that wasn't me. <laughs> then we went on, um, you know, they got the banana boat and jet skis. I mean, there's no laws there. <laughs> so everybody's like crisscrossing each other, so close oh, to hitting. Drunk out of their mind. Exactly. And this one kid that we knew from another college, he comes up and he's got this huge line diagonal across his face. We're like, what the heck? You know, what happened to you? <laughs> He's like, I was on the jet ski with one of the people there, and they let um, one of the parasail lines, they got too close. Oh, my God. It cut his face. Like oh, my God. flew off the back. So he's hitting us wire uh-huh. like at 30 exactly. miles an hour, 40 like miles an hour. They just have no, no rules. <laughs> no, regu- no regulations hey. on that. Anybody could drive it, like, but it looked painful. <laughs> oh, my God. Read across his face, and that's how he had to be for the rest of the trip. Oh, big line. and then you got it. Oh, I got, and then, what's what's the alternative? Going to the hospital, oh, right? Yeah. yeah, where are you gonna get with that? Get some tequila. <laughs> Shoot, take a shot. Yeah, Feel let's better. Disinfect this wound. Fuck. Oh. <laughs> Woo! I, and I bet he probably. I guarantee he's probably the type of guy. Woo! I know, right? <laughs> I remember one time, like when we were coming out of there, it was like if you went right, that mm-hmm. was where it was um, Americanized. Like there was an Applebee's, a Pizza Hut. <laughs> it, it seemed like family friendly. If you went left, it was like I remember seeing a bag of blood. Like it looked like blood. <laughs> bag I'm not of blood. Just, like in like an IV thing. We were like, because uh, we're like, let's see what's what's left. What people are, t- yeah. are talking about. We went maybe a block. You we were, were about like, to become uh, headlines, you know. Yeah. <laughs> we went a block and we're like, see ya. College kids found right? it. <laughs> and they had the taxis were like those little. Um, they were old though. Those um, what are they called the punch buggies? What are they? The Volkswagen? Like yeah, the Bugs, little, the Beatles. Yeah, the Beatles. Those little ones. And I mean, there was like seven of us. And they <laughs> and sat packing- everybody in. They were just like, no, all of you. I mean, it was like a clown car. We're all like jammed in there. <laughs> yeah. They're like, no, everyone, it's fine. And we're like, oh my, like going up hills, and we're like. And the regulations, along. yeah. <laughs> Getting sideswiped by a 16-wheeler. Yeah, they did not care. It was, there were so many of them, too, and they just fit 10 people in. Oh, my you God. You want to go? Okay. <laughs> the German engineering and exactly. Mexican <laughs> navigation. It's scary sometimes. No, everybody, come in. Come in. It's okay. Everyone, everyone, everyone. everyone. 
Like, oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> we survived, though. That's good. <laughs> I don't know how, but I we survived did. survived spring break. Right, oh my Jesus. god. You know that's like an Inside Edition episode right there. Right, yeah. <laughs> they decided to I make swear. a left. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I just remember only a block we went, and we're like, uh, we're gonna go back. <laughs> it's, I mean... I mean, I was here. For my, I, I, I mean, I've, I mean, I went to Jamaica when I was a kid. I went to Puerto Rico a <laughs> bunch Yellow of times Man. with Yellow Man, <laughs> and um, but I always hear that. Like, I have friends that like go to like resorts and stuff like that, and, and they always to, say, like, "Go off." The yeah, you don't. Yeah, there's right? usually like there's usually like a bus right from the hos- <laughs> yeah. right from the like airport right to the resort, and you know. And, yeah, we had a bus. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> we had I a bus. The bus. And again, it was going up the yeah, hill, and it's always like bus. trudging <laughs> along. Like it was never. We were never going, like, the speed limit. We were always, like, like, you were putting along. But I remember the bus. I mean, I don't even know. It just didn't seem right. Like, the guy was just like, here, we got Coronas. And we were like, okay. Like, were we supposed to be on that bus? I don't know. Nothing was really directed. <laughs> it was like, yeah, we'll take you to that hotel. Okay. Oh, shit. <laughs> we went. I mean, there was a huge group of us, so I felt somewhat <laughs> safe. We're going to die. We're all going to die I, together. Yeah, if, if I'm going to go, you're all coming with me. <laughs> But, I mean, they did get us there to the hotel. <laughs> they, they were honest. <laughs> it's, it, you know, uh, wow. Uh, we did put our faith into this. <laughs> a lot of people there, now looking back, it's... And, like, did you, like, because the funny thing is, like, I've been to Jamaica, I've been to the Dominican Republic, I've been mm-hmm. to Puerto Rico. Like, was it, like, did you have the water or anything like that? Did they tell you, like, not drink the water? I didn't. Or, uh, yeah, okay. well, I just always hear that. So I'm like, I don't even want to go through that pain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, now that I think of, I mean, when I was a kid, like, I mean, all this stuff... Now, like you know, when I'm old enough now to appreciate it, I don't go anywhere. Right, um, right. yeah. <laughs> but you don't like, have any money. To yeah, I was here, like oh, you know, you only have to, you know, there, all you could drink out there is like Coronas and tequila, and, <laughs> and that's all, pretty much all we did. But I remember because like me, and now, um, you know, for the audience or whatever, and I, like I told you earlier, I'm 100 percent Puerto Rican, but I am the whitest Puerto Rican <laughs> on the face of the planet. And he looks Italian. <laughs> everyone, everyone thinks I'm Italian. I've had people think I'm Polish, Little Jewish, blocks, right? <laughs> Polish. I swear to God, someone said Polish kind once. Of a Jewish look. I Jew- and I grew yeah. up. I grew up around Jews, yeah. so like you know. And then I worked for a Jewish guy, so I learned all you know, Lachaim and yeah. Baruch Hashem and all that. Mazel tov. <laughs> <laughs> My brother-in-law's Jewish, so I, I know a little bit. <laughs> Shalom. And and so I am the palest Puerto Rican on the face of the planet. And I do not take sun very well. I turn into a freaking <laughs> lobster. Say, do you get tan? Do I don't tan red? at all. I get totally red. And You're I remember like the Irish Puerto Rican, or something, you know. <laughs> and that's not, you know. And if, oddly enough, my grandfather had red hair. And years and years ago, back when you know yeah, he got fun. by because everyone thought he was Irish. Yeah. You know? But I guess he was more Spanish, you know, for the Spanish like from Spain. And I think we stopped off on the island for a couple of generations. Yeah, you know, banged a couple yellow natives man, and then kept know. it moving. <laughs> you guys in Yellow Man were hanging out. <laughs> yellow Man's grandparents. Yellow Man with Yellow. The Yellow Man was the man because he took us. Um, yellow Man took us. I mean, I'm going back to Jamaica. With yellow How man, old were you? Um, Jesus Christ, I had to be like eight years old. Really? That's, yeah. And your dad's with Yellow Man. Yellow Man, and you know, we we, we went. Oh, I, and I remember the funniest thing was we went to a place called Ocho Rios, which is everything in Jamaica. Like Jamaica used to be run by Spain, so a lot of stuff there's named Spanish. Spanish. So Ocho Rios means eight rivers, and it was this big long uh, river that you would go on, and they literally put you on bamboo rafts that were like that's crazy, put, like freaking total Gilligan's Island bamboo and rafts, <laughs> bam, you know, and you know, put together with like rope and stuff like that. It was crazy, but it actually. <laughs> It like looked, Survivor. Yeah, it was like mm. a long panel, and it's kind of, I guess I'm describing it to a, a audio. <laughs> right. Um, it, you know, it was, a, but it had a seat. It had a little thing that covered over your head. So it, kind of, it was like a gondola, but made yeah. out of bamboo. Bamboo. Now, bamboo was by the itself. river calm? The, well, most of it, <laughs> most until, until, until you got to well, one part where it was rapids. rapids. Now, understand, <laughs> my father at the time is 350 is pounds. stoned. And, <laughs> 350 pounds mm-hmm. with Yellow Man who's 90 pounds soaking wet. So the freaking raft is at like an angle. Yellow Man who's all the way up. Like Yellow Man's half of the raft He's wasn't even in the, the world, water. Right? They hit the rapids. Yellow Man flips <laughs> over my father. And my father. Now my no, father, Yellow Man, no. <laughs> and, the, and what happened was my father had my father had a styrofoam uh, cooler with his beer in oh, it. Of course. And my father was the smart one. He actually, thankfully enough, he kept his wallet in a Ziploc bag mm-hmm. in his pocket. So he, my father knew he was going to crash into the water. He knew or something. something was up with Yellow Man. And so it was so funny to see, like I said, because Yellow Man was a thin, thin guy. I mean, looked like a guy looked like a skeleton with skin wrapped around it. And um, 
and so uh, Yellow Man went flipping over my dad. It was so funny. So you see the a, co- a cooler with me? No, we're on another raft. Oh, okay. I'm on Are you guys on that one? No, yeah, we're. It was two people per raft, and my family traveled with another family. Oh, okay. And so it was like it was me. So you and, saw this whole thing. Oh yeah, we saw that's the whole thing. And I saw Yellow Man, and I thought Yellow Man died. I said, Oh my God, we killed the homeless guy in Jamaica. We killed Yellow Man. <laughs> that's a, the other Inside Edition. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But the funniest thing is to see now, mind you, I wouldn't say it's rapids, but I mean the water got very rough. Well, so, I'm sure on that little raft, it, anything could feel like yeah. rapids. And it's it's my father, a floating styrofoam container filled with Budweiser, a red stripe. I think red stripes the, the beer yeah, out there. I am. Um, yellow man who luckily didn't crack his freaking head on a rock, and uh, you know, and then the guy who actually there's like a guy on the raft and like a the gondola guide. guy, you yeah. know, the guy, yeah, singing, yeah. Well, he didn't <laughs> sing, but he had like this big long bamboo shaft. Now there was one time we were like in thirty feet water, oh my god, thirty feet deep water, and the guy's like, yeah, we're in thirty feet deep water. And I said, yeah, right. And the guy takes the stick because we stood relatively close to the edge because they're keeping us away from the edge. Yeah, and. uh Oh my god, when the guy put like the whole, whole stick, stick in the water, in. It, it terrified me. It's in- did you guys even have like life jackets or was this I no, we had we did have life jackets, but but I mean <laughs> we were on you know, we're on this freaking, you know, these bamboo rats. What kind of um did you see any like sea animals? <laughs> Look, no, were- we didn't see any animals but like the, the tradition there was because you drew, you would go by villages and there'd be women oh, washing yeah. clothes in the river and stuff like that. And the the, the one thing what the, there was a lot of kids, and this is a poor island. Mm-hmm. So you would flip a quarter and into the, into, and they would go dive. Now, mind you, even like in the thirty feet deep water, these kids would go, and that's kind of what they would do is they would go dive under it, dive, get the quarter, and then come up and show you that they got the right. quarter. Now you just gave them a buck twenty five, yeah. but like you know, they're they're performing a feat for you. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like here, kid, drown for this like, quarter. Yeah. Like they're dolphins. This is You're so doing horrible. This. Go ahead. <laughs> Fucking American here, here's a service. dollar. <laughs> Kill do a trick. That. See, we should do that to our homeless right. people. We don't have our homeless people do any tricks know. in this country. Just, it's, it's too simple for dance. them. They just ask for it nowadays. And I'm hungry. No, yeah. fuck you. Do a dance. We gotta, yeah, we gotta start really <laughs> up in the ante on them. Do a trick. Earn yeah. your, earn your dollars. Jump in the water. Jump in the river. Yeah. So you got like a view of the real Jamaica. It was a real Jamaica because and of Yellow Man. Yeah, well, and that's the whole thing because my father goes, uh, you know, me and my brother being, you know, children of the of the seventies, eighties. Mm-hmm. You know, we walk into the hotel room. We're looking around for the TV. <laughs> Where the hell's the TV, Dad? There's no TV. Like what? We're gonna have a cheap hotel. <laughs> oh, it was. You're yeah. lucky if you got a bed. Yeah, it was. It was the most um, rickety Bates <laughs> Motel. You know what I'm saying? And you know, and you know. We're all light skinned. I mean, you know, it, you know, it, you know, it was kind of scary. And then, but see, now, like I said, we traveled with another family, and there was like a, a daughter, the daughter of the other family it was me, and my brother, my mom, and my dad, uh, this other couple, and their daughter. Um, like we had like a, a maid to our room, mm-hmm. and they actually had maids. Yeah, they had maids, okay. <laughs> and like, uh, you know, uh, I was gonna say, uh, like, you know, when you go to Jamaica, the girls like to get the cornrows and stuff like oh, yeah, that. I mean, yeah. this is the '80s and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, they come back with all their hair. Breaking. So, the, yeah, so <laughs> the daughter from the other family, the maid's niece, who I guess was also another maid, but we never, our, our, we had like we saw the same maid every day. It was this oh, big, yeah. heavy set woman, and her niece, you know, like the opposite, is super thin. Uh, she came in and she did the girl's hair. But the funny thing, she's supposed to be working right. as a maid, <laughs> and, she's, and she's doing cornrows. You know, it's not like she's cornrows. Trying to get out of work. Yeah, and it's not like it's not like you know. Five minutes, you're done with cornrows. I mean, she sat there. It's like three hours worth. (laughs) Someone's sitting there. What the fuck? There's no TV in this bitch. Is doing cornrows. (laughs) And so, and you know, I think like my father. I think well, no, I think the other family gave like ten bucks or like fifty dollars. You know, I was like, hey, shit, it's good money if you get you know, yellow man and and it was the maid's knee. (laughs) You guys really experienced Jamaica. It was real, real Jamaican. It was genuine. It was, you know, it was, you know, then the funny thing is, like, we did the same thing when we went to Dominican Republic. I don't know. Is this going to be a whole podcast about freaking vacation? I know, right? (laughs) (laughs) No, but my point, no, no, what happened was, I'll just, my, I can't take sun. I am not good with sun. I actually had, um, burn, sun, uh, what's the word? Uh, uh, I had sunstroke, almost sun poison. Really? Yeah, like. I was hallucinating. I yeah. was seeing shit. I because my You're parents disgrace to your culture. Yeah, like I because you know what it was is you know we I mean we did cultural stuff, but then like uh, 
we would go we would go out to the beach and then and then the funny thing was there was a nice hotel by our hotel you had to stay under so an we umbrella. we snuck into the the pool of the nice hotel that was next to the shitty hotel oh, we were yeah, staying everybody's at everybody's done that and so we would go in the pool now my father likes to drink so my father's drinking me and my brother in the pool now yeah our mother meant well by putting suntan lotion right. or suntan sunscreen on us you're, if you're in a but pool I for eight know. hours, that shit washes <laughs> off. That shit washes off in five minutes. So we, you know, so not only is the sun hitting us once, it's hitting the water, hitting us mm-hmm. again. I was so red. I had freaking blisters on my shoulder. Was that like the first day of the trip too? So well, the whole trip you were red? Well, no, I don't, it had to be a couple days in because okay. I just remember, I remember it was terrifying because I, w- I, I was, halluc- I was literally hallu- hallucinating because we went one night Awful. of, one night of the trip, we actually went, we went to a yet another smaller island <laughs> off of Jamaica, or we went somewhere where that you needed to get on a ferry. Okay. So we got on this ferry, and the ferry is taking us to the other island, and I swear up, to, and I'm panicking, and I'm screaming at the, at the top of my lungs. I'm one of those people. I was screaming that there are alligators in the water, and they're coming to get us, because in my mind, I saw right. the eyes coming out of the water. You were, what, eight years old? I was like eight years old, <laughs> screaming, <laughs> screeching, like, you, I'm that one kid that everyone yeah, hates. Yeah. <laughs> And it's me, freaking! It's me hallucinating, hallucinating because they were they weren't there. Like everyone, like my mom, my mom went to look. You know, she because she's worried. She doesn't know what the hell's going on. No, baby, there's nothing. Big, Chris, there's nothing there. So, um, you know, my father, oh, shut up! <laughs> there's no freaking alligators. There. There's alligators. They're gonna come eat us. So, um, uh, sunstroke had big freaking blisters, and it was it was so Awful. yeah. <laughs> Sunburn's the worst because then it's like you can't move a certain way. Oh, it hurts. And they put cold cream on you. That yeah. doesn't do shit. What is <laughs> yeah, cold cream? Low, yeah. What is a cold cream? It, it keeps it's you like cool. It's like soothing for like two seconds and then that's it. Oh. It's not curing my burn. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> And I had the big blisters on top of my lip. Oh, it was such a freaking nightmare. And that's why all the old pictures of us going on trips is me freaking red lobster red. Okay, so uh, <laughs> let me see what. Okay, so like I said, four twenty. Now four twenty tomorrow is the big pot day. Um, and I remember, you know, uh, I you know I, I'm originally from Manhattan, Lower East Side. You're from you're from Rochester, but you moved yes, but you moved I lived to there Manhattan for a couple of years. Okay. And um, are you familiar with all of Washington Square Park? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I went to Washington Square Park. I remember when I was a kid, you know, and, uh, I mean, I don't smoke pot now. I'm not a big, I, the, yeah, okay. <laughs> well, the, for tomorrow, right? well, <laughs> well I, um, I was a correction officer for 10 years. Uh-oh. I was a state correction officer. And I won't tell you about my past. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, and then, see, and that's the whole thing is that like during those years, I didn't smoke pot. And then like, I was, you know, well, okay, I'm, I'm a lie. I'm a lie. I did actually yeah. smoke pot once. What you confiscated from your... <laughs> And, and, um, what had happened was I was, I was, I was, I used, I used to be married. I'm divorced now. And I was with, uh, me and my ex-wife were in the house and we're watching like, it was like National Lampoon's Bachelor Party Part 2 or some shit like that. And the guys, the guys are getting lit up. And so I told her, I said, man, I would love to, I would love to smoke a joint. I'd love to smoke a blunt. And so she worked in a restaurant. She was a chef. And so she's like, oh, she goes, all the guys I work with are all fucking potheads. And I was like. I said, I said, get me some, get me, get me some. So, you know, the funny thing is, like, I gave her, like, $20 to go. Now, the get funny the thing. the good stuff? You know, now, when I was a teenager, you know, now, I smoked when I was a teenager. And also, look, well, let me just say, let me just preface all this by saying that uh, no future employers can yes. use this podcast against <laughs> us. You do not have permission. Not one of you. You cannot say, I heard your podcast. You do not have permission. You're not, for neither one of us to use this against us. Now we can continue. And I continue. So I was, I was a, I don't say I was a pothead, but I smoked a lot of pot when I was a teenager. I wasn't Pretty a pothead. Pretty much every day, but I, but I wasn't a pothead. <laughs> and, um... Of the the funniest thing is that I never bought a bag. I was never the person who handed money to anybody. Right. No, I swear to God. No, I, I was gonna say I was the same way. I it was always somebody had it, and then yeah, and I I'm never not gonna get involved with the whole exchange. <laughs> well, uh, well, I mean, growing I up, I didn't even know who to go. To. Yeah, that's all. Like when I went, when I grew up, um, like I, I used to smoke pot after school. Mm-hmm. So this is in Fort Greene, Brooklyn. This is you know. Fort Green, I mean, it's all gentrified now. It's all freaking right. hipsters and everything like that. But you know, back in so cool. ninety one through ninety, what was that? <laughs> they think they're so cool. Oh yeah, and... it's oh, it's such a freaking. <laughs> it's all pale faces. And the funny thing is that you know, it's and... still a ghetto. The funny thing, it's still a ghetto. But like these hipsters are trying to like yeah. def- defy. Now, and the funny thing, I lived there also <laughs> for a little while. But um, so uh, you, I, I there were there were stores, corner stores, bodegas that used to right. sell weed. But since I didn't know them and I wasn't one of their regular customers, I couldn't come. And I used to, mm. I tried 
and say, yo, let me, get, you know, let, me get a, let me get a dime bag. And the guy would look at me like all funny. You know? And then, you know, my homegirl would go. Because well, you were probably pale and red. Yeah. <laughs> Sunburned. Skeptical. Like, who is this Jewish Irish kid coming in all the time? Anybody know him? <laughs> And and so the um so they never sold to me. But then my <laughs> female friend who was a bigger, way bigger pothead than I was. I would go in with her. And then the whole thing is, I'm also trying to go with her. Like, you know, can you let them know to yeah. sell to me? And yeah. they still didn't fucking sell to me. And oh, I just drop my giant. I have this huge, huge microphone on like toothpick, stand. toothpick of a stand. <laughs> um, so uh, so like I said, so um. So she would buy the weed, and I mean, I, my other friends used to buy weed. I never bought a bag, and I mean, you know, we're, we're talking about like probably like from fourteen to about nineteen, mm-hmm. you know, about five years solid pot smoking, or probably twenty or so. Um, I never bought a bag, never purchased it myself, right? And um, and I never rolled, I never rolled a blunt, I never rolled a joint. I have I, no idea how they do that. I never it's perfect. And I <laughs> would love to just get that crap down, just in general, just to say I've done one. Uh-huh. But, no, it's too perfect for me. Like, I feel like my fingers, I can't do it. Yeah, I, I, there's I a skill. I think it's one yeah, of those things a skill. that you learn it. I guess you learn it with practice or something. <laughs> you learn it as a teen. I think I missed my prime. <laughs> I just don't think I can do it. But what's so gross, though, with the blood? I mean, they're licking and it. They're and licking then you it. go and smoke it. <laughs> you know, and it, oh. yeah, at that point, you just don't care. You're like, all right. Or, like, you're sharing, like, a bowl with, like, somebody who's coughing. Yeah. <laughs> they're sick, and you're like, eh, Oh, when they're smoking it, and they get, they got their fucking drool all over yeah, it. Yeah, like, here, oh, the- thanks. Oh. I mean, at that point, you're just, all right, I'm just looking to get I don't want to get hepatitis. <laughs> I just want to get a buzz. <laughs> just looking to get a good high. I don't know what you got. <laughs> Sounds pretty chronic. Oh, my God. Yeah. This guy's coughing. It's really gross, but, I, you know, you still got to do it. <laughs> and um it's gotta be a trooper. Yeah, so like I never so when I when I now like I said, this is when I was still a correctional officer. <laughs> it's, it's been years since I smoked nice. weed. And so I told her, I said, Look, get a twenty bag off this kid. But and I I gave her like twenty one dollars, said buy two blunts and give it to him to yeah, roll. Right? <laughs> Have him do all the legwork. Yeah, <laughs> hey, look, I, I bought a twenty bag off he, he could he could right. he could have shorted <laughs> me, you know, it could be a dime bag, I don't care, you know what I'm saying? You know, it's a serv- it's customer service, customer that's service. what this service. country that's needs. That's what it's all about. And so, I mean, no, and Did so she, she came, she came home with two tightly wrapped blunts. That is a great service. <laughs> that and, is very nice. And I remember we got, now, cause that's the whole thing. When I was a kid, I mean, I couldn't smoke at home. I wasn't, one right. of the, you know, my parents weren't Up in your open like that, it. you know, cause some people were, no, my parents, you know, so I couldn't smoke weed like that. And when I was a kid, I was like, man, when I get older, mm-hmm. I'm going to have my own house. I'm going to smoke weed every day. I'm going to grow up myself. Yeah, man. <laughs> fuck the man. I'm going to get hot. And then and, you became a correctional. Then I finally got a house. And like, I'm not doing that. You know, I don't even drink in my house, which is bullshit. No, but you know, like, you know. There's four local over here. <laughs> Just so everybody that's knows. Yeah. I got a crate of four, four logo, logo from Walmart. But actually, it's empty now. It's holding yeah, stickers. Yeah, he doesn't no. drink. <laughs> um, so, uh. So, like I said, so, you know, and it was, it was, uh, uh, my lifelong, my long, long teen dream. This is it. It's I'm happening. in my own home and I'm getting fucking buzzed. And, and, you know, and that was because, you know, me and my ex-wife, we had a three bedroom house. It was, and it was just us. We had no kids. We had no. And so, you know, and we, I did drink in the house. So it was like, it was nice because you could pass out anywhere. You mm-hmm. want to pass out on the couch, pass out on the couch. You want to pass out on the floor. You want to sit on the steps and pass out. You know, like you could get... Bathroom floor. Yeah. Always you could... cold. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, you know, I finally had a place I can get high Just in. Did... And I only took advantage you of it once. once. Yeah, you know, because I was like, man... I think there comes a point, yeah, you're so excited in that young age. And then once you get in, like, your mid-20s, that's where I'm at right now. Mm-hmm. I'm so old. 26. Now I'm like... You know, I don't drink as much anymore, and I feel lame. But it's like I don't even want to. <laughs> you just get to that point. Where you're like, mm, I gotta do something else. Yeah, I gotta, <laughs> you know, you get tired of the people fun. are moving on. I guess I got. <laughs> yeah, people. It's that time. Of, it's that time mm-hmm. of life. Everyone's like, your body can't really keep up with it yeah, if you try. Oh, it's for what to get a buzz for what? Because you want to screw a fucking stranger. Yeah. Oh, that's you, you know, feel horrible <laughs> the next day. He's like, I got work to do. I, I ain't got time for this bullshit. <laughs> You know, that I, was the best. You had no responsibility as a kid. Go out and smoke. You yeah, have to pay bills. And now you finally have a house. And you're like, shit, I got, I got a mortgage to worry about. I can't get fucking. You know. Then you get paranoid. You gotta mow the lawn tomorrow. Can the neighbors smell it? You know. Yeah. <laughs> I can open the window, but do you think they're gonna smell it? <laughs> and you know, I lived. I, mean, I lived for all intents purposes. I lived in the ghetto in New Jersey. And Gorgeous. my house was attached on both sides, so oh, like yeah. you know, so I was like, uh, so they really could smell. It. They really could smell it, and, you know. Now, mind you, my neighbors are probably smoking crack, and I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna be worried. I'm worried about my weed. You're worried about the pot. And it was, you know, but like I said, I mean, but you know, since it's been so many years, I got fucking 
Oh, oh I was so fucked up. Where did you up. wake I was, up? No, I, <laughs> I think I passed out on the couch, which was my usual, uh, you know, because, like... You probably couldn't move your legs or high, like... Oh, uh, ah. yeah, oh, I was... And, no, well, <laughs> one thing I do have to say was that I had such a fucking laughing fit, you know? I'm, I'm a it happy... was the best, because you have no idea. After a while, you're like, I don't even remember, but it was <laughs> funny. <laughs> And you're hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> and we were laughing, and then she was laughing, and then her laughing was making me mm-hmm. laugh. It was, it was. And you can't, and then your eyes are watching. It's a mess. A good solid twenty <laughs> minutes of, of hardcore laughing, where like I had, I had it's to turn red. You. And you know, it was, it was such a experience. Like, because the funny thing was, before then, the last time I smoked weed, where I said this is the last time I'm going to smoke weed, was before <laughs> I, be- before I became a correction <laughs> officer, and before because I knew I was going to go for the physical, and there was right. like a piss test and everything like that. Now you I can had, cheat that. Yeah. No, well, <laughs> well, I had I had a friend who, well, my friend's brother. I mean, he was my friend, but he was more he was my friend's brother, and he was the pot. De- he was a pot dealer <laughs> who, coincidentally, his brother's a cop, NYPD. Oh, like and this that. guy is selling fucking weed out of his house, and he's like, <laughs> you know, and it's so typical. Did like, his brother know? I think his brother knew. He's, you know, I mean, big four hundred pound guy still lived with his mom. You know, did so nothing with his life. Yeah. Oh, and yeah, you know, and he had weed. And then the funny thing is, you know. Like, like he's like I'm dealing with fucking Scarface here. He kept the weed in a safe, and then like it, it wasn't even like like a little safe, like yeah. like like a mini fridge. You know what I'm saying? And he kept this fucking weed in the safe. Like he's was, got diamonds, and yeah, treasure yeah, twenty three, right? <laughs> Pirates gold, uh, yeah. Treasure yeah. Map. It was funny though, and so the we used to we used to buy from him. And uh, I think yeah, his brother did know. I mean, his brother didn't live at home anymore, but this guy was like big fat guy. He lived yeah, at home put with two his mom. And two together. He's an you entrepreneur. Know. You can't hate on him. <laughs> with this economy, you got to do what you can. <laughs> and then we're talking about fucking entrepreneur. I bought the weed from him. And, I was, and with, with specific thought in mind, this is going to be the last time mm. I'm smoking weed. And he smokes with us. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's like, he sold it to he me. He sold it. Now he's going to smoke it. Now he's going to smoke it. You know what I'm saying? The opposite of customer service, you know. <laughs> you know, you don't go to McDonald's and they have the fucking right. Big Mac with you. Did he roll it for you? Um, How did that happen? That's and you know, okay, no, he did roll it. Service. He did roll it. He did roll it. Okay. So he felt entitled. Yeah. But I and think, but he held on to it for a little while. He held on for a little oh, longer yeah, than he should have. And so, um. They're always trying to get a little more out of it. You know, I, but what a fucking, you know, what a, what a, what a, uh, what a. Was that your actual last time? Well, besides the time smoking in my own house, in my own house. And I oh, said. Oh, was that after? Yeah, that, you know, that's I, my last, where, with my friend's brother, that was before, I knew I was going to corrections. Oh, uh, okay. And so I said, this is the last time I'm smoking weed. And then when I was in corrections. Oh, then, so when you were actually the correctional officer. That's when I smoked you know, weed in my house. kids not to smoke and. Oh, yeah, and no, kids don't, <laughs> don't, yeah. Well, I mean, you know. <laughs> Kids don't smoke weed. And I don't do it anymore. And it's you have it was, the Dare program. Yeah, well, the that, Dare T-shirt. Oh, that, well, no, but we the blood. we did have when I was a correctional officer. That's a funny story. We did have the Scared Straight program. Oh yeah. Yeah. Now I'm, I what? I went into the academy in '99, mm-hmm. and and I graduated the academy. So my first place right out of the academy is Sing Sing. It worked. I was going to say, Sing. did you go to Sing Sing? And that's you know that's like that's usually the place they take them, right? Yeah. Well, no. Yeah. Well, um, oh no. Well. As, what do you mean, the scare straight kids? Or? Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, it was, because Sing Sing's like a max class. Right. Max, they call it cl- uh, max class A, which not is. not where the pot dealers are going. Yeah, that's like, <laughs> it's murderers and yeah. rapists. But the funny thing is, you would have guys that were, you would have guys that were just like local pot dealers. Mm-hmm. Because the the situation with, um, with the prisons were, there's like five prisons in the city area, mm-hmm. like the Bronx. Now, keep in mind, um, the way corrections work, or at least in New York State, 75% of the prison population comes from the five boroughs, comes from New York oh, City. Of course. <laughs> so the funny thing is that, and you know, the rest of these guys, you know, they go, you know, these guys from the Bronx go upstate, go, you know, yeah, they come here to Rochester Attica. or something like that. Well, <laughs> well, actually, no, there's no, there's no, there's no, st- is there a state facility by here? I can't think of, other than Albion. Albion's a woman's yes, facility. Yes, right. Um, but, uh, you know, the funny thing is, you know, these are guys who've seen, they've lived in the concrete jungle their whole life, and then right. they go upstate and they deal with some real yeah. good old boys. <laughs> That's scary. And let me tell you, and that was my big threat. That's scary. That was my big threat when I was a correctional officer. I would say, I said, man, I'm going to whip your ass. First, I'm going to whip your ass, and then I'm going to send you to Clinton. And now, Clinton, you can't get any more north than Clinton. Okay. Like, you know, it's literally like like a 45-minute drive from the Canadian border. So, but that's the whole thing. And, and you know, when you go to these prisons, upstate, threaten them with Canada. <laughs> yeah, threaten, well, threaten them with white boys. Then that scares them more than white be by them. Because the prison, because and it was notorious that when you go to a correctional facility like Clinton or you go to a correctional facility, they're in these little podunk bullshit towns. And I, oh, I, don't, I hope I'm not offending anyone who lives upstate New York. 
But they know everybody. <laughs> everybody who works in a prison is somebody's brother, someone's cousin, someone's right. uncle. So when they whip they your ass, everybody's <laughs> whipping your ass. You know what I'm saying? Like you know, you got, you make a black mark with one bad officer, you're done with the whole family. Blood's thicker than water. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and so you know, and that was my threat. I would say, I'm gonna whip your ass, and then you're gonna be on the next. You're gonna be on the next bus up to Clinton. And so, so they liked being in Sing Sing because Sing Sing was about a 45 minute drive outside New York City. I mean, so I mean, I mean they, excuse me, like me in Sing Sing. Sorry, my brain all hopped up on caffeine. Um, so they they kind of liked being in Sing Sing because their family could still come visit them. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? Because if you if you lived if if you were up in Clinton, your family has to drive six, seven hours, there. eight hours. Yeah, they're not going. They'll see you once a year. Mm-hmm. And then Sing Sing actually had a bus. That actually stopped in all the ghetto neighborhoods, and I'm oh, sorry, I hate to say it, it's just the truth. That is awesome. It stopped awesome. in Brooklyn. It stopped in the Bronx. Next stop, Sing Sing. Yeah, and, uh, and I, I feel, imagine being a little kid getting on that on it. On the bus, no. Well, I mean, it was a bus. Now I feel bad for the bus driver because you got these what? ghetto fucking people on a bus for six hours driving I through the that country. Had, like, a cage around. Oh, there. I felt bad like for the, the guy. Police cars. I got some sort of. You know, <laughs> no, it was just a, it was a regular, uh, like a school bus, imagine but painted that's... blue. Probably like their first year being a bus driver. We're gonna oh, put you on this route. Me. Yeah, we're gonna put you. You're gonna get. We're gonna see how six you hours with ghetto people. Here's your initiation. <laughs> going to a prison. So it's not like they're going somewhere nice. It's not like you're taking them to Great Adventure or Darien Lake or whatever. You know. Here's your initiation. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, so they like being in Sing Sing. So, um, all right. So right, I'm working in I'm working in Sing Sing now. Sing Sing. They have two main blocks. There's A block and B block. There's other blocks, but the two main block. A block is 585 men. B block is 535 men. In the afternoon, A block was 24 officers, 585 men. It was a freaking nightmare. They could just, it was it could be a riot, an uprising, oh. just take over the whole place. So what happens is, right, um, now, for all intents and purposes, there was order. I mean, yeah, mm-hmm. whenever... The, Whatever violence is going on, it wasn't inmate on officer. It was inmate on inmate. inmate. I mean, trust me, I followed trails of blood. You know what I'm saying? They've been, especially in the summer months. Gotta go to this room. In the, in the <laughs> summer months, shit pops off a lot more. And you, it was like, it's like, it's like the worst, the easiest detective show on the planet. You just follow the trail of blood to the person that's what the victim. What was so great about the summer months? That well, it just, I guess it got him crazy. irritated. Well, Sing Sing, keep in mind, Sing Sing is like a freaking hundred year old building. So mm. the plumbing is ancient. The, the wiring is ancient. The gear, you got hostile I'm guys. Hot. <laughs> you know, it's prison. And then, and oh, this is a fucked up part. It was the summertime. In the summertime, uh, like I said, the plumbing was ancient, but there was also a walkway behind the cells. If you didn't like a guy, you could turn off his water. Turn off a guy, turn off a hot, hot yeah. fucking guy's water in the summertime. Not that I ever did anything like yeah, that. Right? But, you know, it was one Oopsie. of the, it was one of the things where guys would, you know, they would threaten, you know. Threaten with the water. You, could, you turn off a guy's water. I mean, you know, I don't know anything about that. I wonder no, why they're so angry. No, no one's going to come investigate me. No, but, um, <laughs> so, okay, so I'm working in A block. Like I said, 585 men. Now, this is during the day. I was actually doing what they call a swap shift where you work for somebody, they work for you later. I always just work the afternoon. So, all of a sudden, the block goes fucking crazy. Cool. It goes from, you know, it's usually, I mean, it's, there, there's always like a re- regular level of noise. Yeah. But it goes from regular to, Rah! and I thought, this oh my it. God, this is it. <laughs> my asshole slammed shut. Yeah. I said, I said, that's it. You I'm run gonna, out of the building. <laughs> I said, that's it. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I, I t- uh, when was the last time I spoke that's to my mom that I told yeah. her I love her? You know. Let me call, give my, <laughs> my last wishes. And what had happened was, is the Scared Straight program just came in. Oh. Now, usually we keep order, but what we do is we allow the guys to right. go fucking ape shit to scare the shit right. out of the kids. But boy, I was no one told me it was no scared straight. Me, I was gonna say no to give you a heads up. <laughs> yeah, and just, suddenly you got your gun. The whole fucking you know, and that's all thing. You don't have a gun. You got a kids. you got a fucking baton. They you didn't got this give fucking, you a gun. No, well, they because they because the inmates it. could take it from me. Yeah, so yeah. you walk up with a fucking a nightstick, that's which they it. could take. I'm also, I'm surprised with that many people versus the inmates. I mean, I would be like, with, screw it. Their mentality was is that I what mean, I say it's five hundred eighty-five men, but like if and and I mean, it's still crazy odds. Right. Like two officers would be on a deck. I mean, if the best way right. to, for the best way to, for me to describe it is, imagine cells back to back, okay, facing outwards back to back, and all of that inside of a bigger cage, okay, and all of that inside of a warehouse, okay. So if the guy was going to break out of his cell, the only place he's going is to another guy's cell next right. to him or behind to another cell. Well, actually, no, he can get, go to the crawl space where we could turn off the water. Yeah, <laughs> everybody knows that. <laughs> and. And so now, so if the guy was going to break out, he would have to break out of his cell, break out of the cage, <laughs> that cage, and then break out of the break warehouse. Out of the whole cage. You know, saying so it, it it wasn't you know it was it, if the guys were going to escape, they weren't going to escape from their cells. They were going to be some other creative way. So um, 
So, like I said, so one of the levels was 180 guys mm-hmm. to two officers. That's just and it's still crazy, but right. but you're locked in with these guys. So exactly. their mentality is is that if the guys start fucking killing you, at least it's restricted to just those 180 guys. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> And, I'm yeah, sorry, but yeah, yeah, yeah. hopefully we'll get somebody to you. Like they could have give you like a gun that's not loaded, and maybe you could load it if you had the time. I mean, I've seen in other facilities. Well, I've ideas. seen like in movies and stuff like that where there's another guy in a catwalk, which is nowhere near right. the inmates, where you know he could buck a with shotgun. His, uh, yeah, you know, what I'm saying with a shotgun or, or, or a rifle, and you know, but we didn't have that. Right. Five hundred eighty-five. Like two men. guys just chilling with a nightstick with 180 <laughs> inmates and a yeah. nightstick. Sorry if you die, but we're all safe. And then the funny thing was that our office, our actually off, our office in the jail, mm-hmm. you know, was another jail cell. We didn't even have an office like where we kept our books right. and, and and our desk and, and paperwork Locked was another in. jail cell. <laughs> so it was, you know, and then the funny and, and, and you had you had to lock, lock it like it. a jail cell when you left the office because the guys would the guys would go and take your shit. Right. Like if an officer left the stuff you have guns up, in there. No, 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 no. That's what I'm saying is that your office, like if you were going to go out on patrol like you mm-hmm. had your office where you kept your, like your log book and paperwork oh, okay. now if you're about to go walk the floor you would actually have to lock a cell because the okay. cell was your office <laughs> this is just my office and, and you know and the funny thing it's still a cell so there were guys if they didn't like you they would put piss in a cup right. and throw piss on your fucking oh. paperwork did you have um the toilet that's not you know just a toilet on the wall in your office do you have your own bathroom <laughs> The, our bathroom was, was the it? toilet from a cell <laughs> that was actually with a door. Like, they put wood in front no, of the nice bars. <laughs> now, mind you, you can, if you peeked around the wood, you could look right. into the bathroom, which I, because we actually had female officers, because you can't, yeah. you can't discriminate. So, a female, you know, but I always like, I wouldn't be a female officer. And if I had to use a bathroom. A piece of wood. Yeah, you better fucking, I, look, you, I'm getting out of this fucking unit if I'm going to use the bathroom. There, like graffiti on them, like so-and-so was here for a good time. No, luckily, no. <laughs> luckily, no. It was, it was, little panel. It was kept relatively clean. Yeah. And, and <laughs> have, you, what, have you ever had to beat somebody with a nightstick, I guess? Um, Anything too crazy? At me, no, me, no. I've never had it. I've, you know, I was there when people got their ass kicked. And, and, and it was one of, I mean, luckily, I just had to threaten if there Canada. Was, if there was like a fight that broke out between between inmate and inmate, did you just let them finish it? The, be like, the right, joke is, done. lock up the winner, scrape up the loser. Learn oh, yeah. <laughs> your lesson. <laughs> yeah, and, and the well, I, the funniest thing was that, now mind you, I was I was a correctional officer briefly in Pennsylvania before New York, and and, and it, was, it was a different kind of vibe there, but... My very first time, I'm in Sing Sing, and the fight breaks out in the in the mess hall. Okay. Now, mind you, the mess hall now there's you know there's a whole bunch of guys in mm-hmm. the mess hall. Don't mess with their food. And know? so, well, no, they, these guys started beefing, and I kind of went up to it. Now, I wasn't thinking; I ran right up to the fight. And you know, I'm saying like, you don't run up to the fight. Right. You know, let them fight, and you know, it's not easier to take they away just one let guy. Them finish that. And mm-hmm. so I go, and I kind of got close to the fight, and I'm trying to like get in the middle and trying to, and I don't. It was stupid. I wasn't thinking. Now, mind you, now I took care of shit like that before I was working in New York State, but I, for some reason, I got close. This other correction officer, this guy freaking 300 pounds six foot two he comes and grabs all of us i mean the two inmates fighting and me in a bear hug and drags us off to the this off it was uh, there was you had to go through this what they called it a mouse trap where there was two doors you know you got, oh, the, see, you got yeah. the unit you got this the, you know you got the unit you go through one door there's and a little bridge and something. you got to open another door to get into the mess hall uh-huh. so he drags us all to the bridge and you know they put you know they they put those guys in line and everything like that. And he's don't you he tell don't you ever go into jump into a fight until you wait for somebody to show. And you know and I should have known that because I I should have known that back when I was right. working a correction officer in, in Pennsylvania. Well, your first rodeo. Yeah, and I don't know why, but I just the funniest thing is that this guy comes and grabs all fucking three of us. You know, <laughs> just with a big. Um, he must have been huge. Yeah, he was a big big guy. Just, he grabbed all three of us. You know, was his calling to do that? Really <laughs> he there, saved right? my life. Probably right. saved my life. <laughs> And so, yeah, it was it was definitely a, a learning experience being a correction officer. It was it was definitely you know um, you know I I, I I could sit here and talk for days. <laughs> I don't know if you want to change the subject or, or something like that. No, I haven't really been in prison, so yeah. Well, the, well, I didn't. Well, it's funny. Well, once again, kind of back to four twenty was also on four twenty was the um, the Columbine right the Columbine sh- shootings. And at that time, that was back in ninety nine. Mm-hmm. I was a, oh. I was a correction officer right. in Pennsylvania. It's, I was working that day. I was working like I said. I usually worked afternoons, but I was there that day when like you know the news yeah. came on. Like, we, you it know, was in the morning. It was like yeah, it was school hours. Eight a.m. or something. And and you know like you know now at now that Pennsylvania prison was a lot different because uh, those guys actually locked in during the day and they only like came out for like an hour or something okay. like that. So there was a TV on the unit. Now the officer would 
could put it on the TV. And now, of course, the guys are like, oh, you'll put it on Jerry Springer. Right. You know what I'm saying? But, <laughs> you know, Maury. but like that day, that particular day, you know, it was on every fucking channel right. and it was, it was, and, and I remember watching it and I was just like, I was like so taken aback only because like, had I been now, you know, I was those kids, you know what I'm saying? I, you know, wearing the, wearing the black right. trench they coat. Have, uh... You know, listening, you know, I'm listening to the, all the music. They listen, yeah, all the music they listen to. I mean, I'm a big Metallica fan, but, She's you know, the tattoos, he's diehard. Oh, I got, yeah, I got like nine Metallica related tattoos. Um, but then uh, it's stereotyped. I mean, like everybody was like anybody who dresses like that, they could be the next. Well, yeah, well, that's the whole thing is that, that whole like thing I was, I, you know, I wore a black trench coat in school. Mm-hmm. Um, now everyone, everyone puts blame on Marilyn Manson for the shit that they did, Mm -hmm. but they were actually, um, they were actually more fans of this band called KMFDM. Now the funny, like, uh, yeah, uh, KMFDM, it's an industrial metal band. Didn't they have like a nickname for them? Like something like trench coat? No, they called them the trench coat mafia. Okay. The trench coat mafia. There was some trench coat thing and I was thinking that. And, and, you know, and I'm going to steal a joke from Chris Rock, you know, that people used to say they were loners, but there was like six guys in that crew. You know, uh, say how are you loners <laughs> when you have five other friends? You know, yeah. and but I mean, it was those two that those actually two, yeah. did the, the, the you know shot the up deed. the school. But you know, they had like four of the friends that. But like when I went to school, you know, wore the trench coat. Listen, I listened to Marilyn Manson. Mm-hmm. You know, you know it, what? In ninety nine, I was twenty two years old. I was only a couple years out of high school myself. Right. I mean, I graduated in ninety five, and this is ninety nine. It's only four years later. I was still listening to Marilyn Manson. I was still listening to KMFDM. I was still listening. And it just, it, like, it really rung, it, like, that shooting. And I'm, and trust me, I'm not taking, I'm not taking the, uh, the, the side of the shooters, but like, right. I understood, you know, not that I was bullied, and I wasn't bullied to the point of, of, but you of, were, yeah, to go and, you go and shoot somebody. That. But like, you know, when I went to school, discriminated, not discriminated, but people but the, made fun of you. Yeah. That, well, that's the funny thing is that we were, were like we that. were outsiders. But once again, I guess maybe that's why we didn't show the school. Right. We had our whole outsider crew, you know, we were a crew of outsiders, right, you yeah. know what I'm saying? We, you weren't just by yourself. Yeah, it was, you know, and the funny thing is, and this is, you know, to kind of bring it back to smoking pot, was, <laughs> <laughs> now, like I said, I went to school in Fort Greene, Brooklyn. I went to Brooklyn Technical High School. And, you know, now there's three specialized high schools, public specialized high schools, Brooklyn okay. Tech, which I, where I went, Bronx Science, and Stuyvesant. Bronx, you know, um... Now, Bronx Science, now, if you were going to rank them in order, it would be Bronx Science, Stuyvesant, and Brooklyn Tech. You okay. know, Bronx Science being high. Now, all the super nerds went to Bronx Science. <laughs> you know, the ones that were kind of nerds, like, and, and, and less Asian, I guess, <laughs> went to Stuyvesant. The non-Asians. And, um, and all the hoodlums, Everybody left. all the hoodlums <laughs> went to Brooklyn Tech. So Brooklyn Tech, you know, even though it was a specialized high school, and I majored in mechanical engineering, yeah. and I, I went to people, you know, I went to school with people that were electrical engineers. I mean, I have friends, I have a friend that, like, works for NASA, or not a friend, but a high school acquaintance. Um, you know, I, a lot of people that I, you know, actually are doing real shit with their lives as opposed to what I'm doing. <laughs> you know, it was the <laughs> smartest of the nerds. I mean, okay. the smartest of the hoods. Okay. And, the hoods. you know, the, it was hoodlums, the smart hoodlums. And so the It's fun- like the Asians of the hoodlums. <laughs> <laughs> and we, and the funny thing was, the one thing that kept us all united was smoking weed. Oh, okay. Now, Everybody does it. Like I said, I ran with the heavy metal crew. Okay. I ran with people that were, you know, people that, you know, when when Kurt Cobain killed himself. Right. Like, people crying. People crying. Pe- people wore bl- a black uh, band around their arm. Mm-hmm. Not that I was never really a Nirvana fan, but, you know, I mean, that's the crew that I ran right. with. I mean, Nirvana was more alternative, but, I mean, you know, metal. Uh, you know, I like, you know, that, that kind of sits with metal, yeah. you know. Um, you know, we wore the black trench coat, you know. Guys wore makeup, you know, mm. you know. Or did you have the eyeliner? But I, I never wore the eyeliner because I looked stupid it. in it. I looked really <laughs> stupid in it. But you know, I had I had the black trench coat. Now this shows the mid nineties. I did have like the the Janet Jackson hat, like the yeah. hat with the metal the metal on top of yeah. the right over the brim, and it said like New York or yeah. something like that. Yeah, I was you Represent know. <laughs> I look like a friggin'. I must have looked like a friggin' idiot. I have pictures somewhere. Yeah, we gotta load those up. <laughs> and so. Uh, you know, but also, like I said, I ran with the heavy metal crew, but there was also like the hip hop crew. There was also kids that liked hip hop. So the funny thing was that the one thing that united us was after school, we all got lit up and smoked weed. Everybody went to the same. It was a peaceful, it was what the hippies, you know, envisioned, (laughs) you know, us getting, you know, people from different walks of life, you know, even though we're all hoodlums, you know, (laughs) getting high. Now, Fort Green Park, Fort Green Park was right across the street from Brooklyn Mm -hmm. Tech. 
Fort Green Park was a mound. It's a, it's, you literally have to walk up dirt to get to the top and the top, at the top there was a monument. So. Walk uphill both We used to, yeah, so you would be on the top of the hill, on the top of the monument. You can see people coming in any direction. So the cops never caught us (laughs) because we would get, we would get drunk and we would see the cops, oh, get rid of it, you know, (laughs) throw it in the garbage or whatever. But there was, uh, my homegirl who I I love her to death, uh, her name is Nefertiti. Um, she was so fucking lit up one day. She did not see. Now it wasn't cops. It was park enforcement. Is bullshit. This is like okay. bullshit. You know, you <laughs> know, rangers. That. Yeah, exactly. You know, and the fucking rangers caught. Now what happened the was we. Now she's so high, and I'm saying I'm going to give a shout out to Neff, and hopefully she's probably listening <laughs> to this right now. Tomorrow, Neff. Um, she she did not notice that everyone got up and walked. She's so she's so fucking stoned out of her out of her gourd. That she actually got a ticket. She had a desk appearance ticket. She had to go to court. All this fucking bullshit. <laughs> she over, had to like pay a fine or over something. Over a stupid. I think. I think they kind of like gave her like probation for like six months or something. But uh, do it again. It's like you know, and I still I, I tease her to this day. It's like you did not see everybody just fucking get up and walk away. But that's how lit up she you guys was. Should have grabbed her. Where were you guys? Get her back. I was. She should blame you guys. <laughs> actually, I wasn't there that day. If I was there, I would have grabbed. I, but. I just. <laughs> I got there. I got there after the fact. I swear. And I think I was. I was in. Sc- I was in school. And it happened, but everyone told me that everyone walked away. And I could, you know, I could picture it in my mind of her just sitting there high out of her mind. Here comes the Rangers. Yeah, Do they bullshit. even have a gun? Park, no, they don't. They, <laughs> the park enforcement is like, that's a step over meter made. You know what I'm saying? It was, it was. Don't get a gun. You're not cool. Yeah. Okay? If you don't have a gun, it's not worth it. <laughs> and so the thing about Forking Park, like I said, you could see people coming from all directions. Right. So it was the perfect place yeah, to get high. Point, yeah, yeah, you know, the, the, you know, was it even when you fight a war, whoever's, whoever's <laughs> uphill always has the advantage. And so, I don't, I've been doing a lot of talking. I don't know. <laughs> no, um, so, uh, there, so that one day we're, we're it's, and talk about like trench coat mafia type shit. Uh, my friend Trevor, who's probably going to listen to this also, his, his nickname was <laughs> Troll. Trevor's six foot five. Troll was his Troll name. Troll was his name. His, 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 his name was Trevor, and we called him Troll. <laughs> Six foot two, dreadlocks. The guy looks like a fucking predator, man. The guy, he looks like from the fucking movie. And I'd say that and he'll laugh when he hears that because he loves, the, he, he loves that, he loves that look. And he's a big fucking muscular guy, big tall guy, crazy, out of his fucking mind. So what happens is, is, I wasn't getting high that day. We were drinking. And so we're drinking on the monument and on, on top <laughs> on of the hill. Monument. And so we're drinking, we're, we're, we're getting drunk. And, and I mean, to show you at the time, it's so funny. I almost feel embarrassed. I'm pretty sure I was drinking Zima. Yes. <laughs> that was cool. That I, was, that I was like, it tastes like Sprite. No big deal. And yes. so, you know, my friends are like, like drinking sick after like two. You're like too much sugar. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, so we're getting, we're getting fucking, we're getting drunk. Now my, I'm cutting class at the time, which, oh, you know, at the time I would never think about cutting class. I went to, I went to Catholic school to eighth grade and then I went to high school public high school and cutting classes so <laughs> now we're getting drunk so trevor shows up troll shows troll. up troll sh- and like Here i said the guy's troll. six foot two big fucking giant guy nobody can notice him now mind you he comes oh what you guys doing oh can i drink with you You know whatever you know Give well, me whatever, whatever, <laughs> whatever happens trevor's drinking with us and so um then we hear we hear like the sound of a scooter. Now the scooter is actually the police officer that was assigned to the school. Like okay. even though we had a bunch of bullshit security guards in the school, right? And then you guys, every like, school had one assigned yeah, police officer. Yeah, we had that too. Like mostly like my junior senior year it wasn't all throughout high school. It was like junior senior year, they like really bulked up on security. <laughs> I guess like thought we'd be safer after with, after a uh, freaking Columbine party. Yeah, they're like we're gonna, put, but they never did anything. It was like really, I, you know. Yeah, well, like, and, you're not really, you're and, just and I have friends that work for NYPD. My brother works for NYPD. That's like the bullshit. That's where right. they put the fuck ups. They yeah. put them in the, to work just, in the high school. Yeah, you want you want to go do this? Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. So we had a guy. His name was Faust. A black guy named Faust. I I never I never know how his his last name was Faust. F A U S T. You know, like that. that's a fucking. I mean, it's pretty badass. What but a Faust. <laughs> <laughs> so Faust Faust shows up on his scooter. We hear a scooter. <laughs> You know, I you know the, the little, the, little sp- yeah, the little. So um, <laughs> so Faust shows up, and so he goes, you know, what are you guys doing? No, we're not doing it. I'm drunk out of my mind. Luckily, my Zima my Zima can my Zima bottle. And so Faust goes, what are you guys doing? I, you know, and luckily we got rid of whatever we had. And he goes, everybody's coming with me. And I said, oh my god, on the scooter. Well, the, well, I guess he's gonna walk us to the fucking school or whatever. Uh, and I think he was on a scooter, but we had to walk. Yeah. But like he was like, you know, Could cutting it down the hill. And so yeah, so and now mind you, I'm drunk. Now I never, I've never gotten in trouble like that. Okay. So I'm like, oh my god, a fucking cop caught me drinking, and you know, I'm gonna get expelled from school. My parents, he's gonna call my parents. 
So he, we go, we go into the, um, we go into the dean's office. Oh, we're actually we're in a, we're next to the dean's office. We're going to the dean's office. And so, like I said, I'm drunk. And so, um, you can smell the Zima. In your <laughs> the hardcore alcohol and drink a fucking Zima. It's like Bartles and James. It takes and shit. like a, like a six pack just to get a buzz. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so my the the um, the dean calls me into his office and he goes, um, so what do you? He goes and like the first thing I so what do you, what do you want to tell me? And okay. I got fucking <laughs> tears in my eyes. Don't call my dad. Don't call my mom. I'm sorry. I was drinking in school. I'm sorry, you know. But I, I wasn't drinking in school. I was drinking across the street. Yeah. Doesn't count. And he goes, um, oh, what do you know about the explosion? And I said, what? What do you know about the explosion? I said, I don't know what the, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I, you know, I cut whatever fourth period. I said, I left fourth period. I said, I said, I've been up in the park drinking, and I'm sorry. I don't mean to be drinking. And he goes, well, you don't know about. And I said, no, I. I what had happened was Troll oh, <laughs> lit a fucking M80. Now, an M80 is a quarter stick oh of fucking my God. dynamite. He lit an M80 in the fucking basement. Now, Brooklyn Tech is a big, giant building. Mm-hmm. In the fucking basement, like, you know, and sound carried as it yeah. was. In the basement, he lit an M80, and then he left. And then forgot to fucking mention it to us. Like when he, he was just walking like a badass, like, flames in the yeah, back. Yeah, like, uh, now, I guess from where we were, maybe I was so drunk, I didn't hear the You're explosion. Right? Maybe I was that drunk. <laughs> just forgot to tell us. Yeah, like, <laughs> oh, by the way, guys, I lit a quarter stick of dynamite in the fucking... But that's like yeah, a terrorist act. He walks act. away from the fire like he's so badass. <laughs> Thank God this was before Columbine. Thank right. God this was before 9-11. Because he would have probably been... He probably would have been arrested. I, I, I don't know how he wasn't arrested. So, and like I said, I'm drunk, you know, and of course I bring, I don't know what you're talking about. What explosion? Has anybody What explosion? I've been drinking Zima for the past 45 minutes. I'm so messed up on the Zima. (laughs) But Troll, Trevor never fucking told us what he did. Did he tell you later? He told us oh, later. He goes, like, he goes yeah. ah, I little fucking I made it a bit. by himself. And, and, just and it's, you didn't fucking it. think to tell us. <laughs> you know, and I was, because I remember like another time, like <laughs> Brooklyn Tech is an eight story building and the cafeteria of all places is on the eighth floor. Like, oh, I remember, like, awful. yeah, he, yeah, he had to walk up eight flights to get fucking get a lunch. workout just to get fat food, right? And I remember <laughs> Trevor was fighting with a girl named Christine and threw her book bag out the window. Oh. A book, and I, we, uh, like, in Brooklyn Tech, you know, especially high school, big, thick, and a, a book bag dropping That's eight stories. He could have killed somebody. Yeah. Trevor was a dangerous fucking person. Troll didn't care. <laughs> Troll and, just didn't care. And so, um, but I'm like... You know, he goes, ha ha, you know, I, I, I blew Was he by himself? He, just he was by himself. Just he just play. decided just to be a fucking... A was total, there any damage? Like I the think, whole building I, That's how the whole thing is. It fucking could have, like, <laughs> you know, if he buys a support beam, I mean, that building is old and is like pre-war <laughs> right. kind of a building, but, you know, fucking, you know, thank God it was before Columbine, thank God. But, I mean, that's the kind of crew that I rolled with, with people like fucking troll. bombs and, and Zimas. You know, and, you know, and we used to talk about, oh, you know, we're going to come back, or, you know, we're going to shoot the school, or, you know, <laughs> you know, we used to talk about shit like that, you know what I'm saying? It's going to happen, guys. You know, we even, I remember even, there was somebody, and I swear to God, it's a true story, uh, you know, we used to, we used to have like a, monthly magazine or whatever i forgot it was the te- it was called the tech night or whatever oh okay and i remember like a kid put in even a kid put in a, a cartoon oh drum knock over my big ass microphone you know this kid put a, a, a cartoon about oh, no. how he wants a souvenir from the school so he takes a brick out of the wall and then like the next panel is like the whole building collapsing <laughs> on itself you know what I'm saying i mean not that that was meant to be like a terrorist act right. but i mean like Nowadays, we had yeah that's what i'm saying we had we had imagery of, of, yeah. of the building collapsing we wore <laughs> black trench coats <laughs> You know, uh, you know, we are we so lucky. We were the yeah. trench coat mafia. The original. And it really, you know, like when that shit happened, it it, it, it really struck me oh, like, yeah. holy shit, you know. Um, wow. Um, well, we're rounding up about 58 minutes right now. Oh, okay. That went by quick. Yeah, it went by quick and we didn't even... <laughs> we we, we spoke, only did like two topics. Two topics. And I guess that's the beauty of... That's a good thing. ...of um, doing uh, the podcast. Um, so once again, uh, my name is Chris. And I'm Kristen. And uh, thank you for listening. Yes, absolutely. Uh, thank you so much. Um, if anything, if you allow me just to, to pimp. Uh, uh, goes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pimp my book. Uh, my book is called Double Jackpot. Um, you can get it at www.doublejackpot.us, not .com, www.doublejackpot.us. Um, uh, you can, there's links there to uh, my eBay account. I'm selling all my old video games and comic books and movies and heavy metal memorabilia. It's got a lot of stuff. I got a whole a bunch of, of stuff. stuff. Um, you know, there's a link to the Twitter account. I opened up a Twitter account 
for the book. Um, it's part one of my comic books, Heavy Metal and Video Games Trilogy. Uh, the second book is called Odd I See, A Tale from the Road. That will be coming out soon. Um, so once again, www.doublejackpot.us. Uh, thank you for listening. Thank you. It's been an Check hour. Check out the website. Thank you for sharing your time with us. And um, hopefully the next time we'll have more stuff to pimp. Yep. <laughs> uh, thank you for listening. Thank you. All right, here we go, man. Go ahead. You want read Double it? Jackpot. What is it? It is a self-published book by Christopher Cologne. Chris it's- Cologne? Smells good to me. But- <laughs> <laughs> Look at her. That broke that fucking cold little exterior. He's like, hee hee But it is spelled C-O-L-O-N. Him punny. But <laughs> Double Jackpot is a book about a comic book artist, Eric, who is in a loveless relationship with a materialistic I feel you, Eric. Lynette. I know, I, I know. Oh, fucking. Are you sure I didn't write this? <laughs> Uh, I, I smell sounds hauntingly familiar. He starts cheating on his girlfriend with a more creatively, su- sorry, creatively supportive woman, Nadia. Oh, I, I gotta meet her. Where's the Nadia? There's your summer girlfriend. Summer Nadia is Nadia. Nadia? Yeah, I think Nadia spelled with an A. All right. Both Lynette and uh, Nadia play the double jackpot, the largest payout in lotto history, much like the recent Powerball. Both girls play his birth date as the winning re- as the winning numbers. Eric is now stuck between two of the country's richest women. Who will he choose? It's not that simple. This is a clever fucking idea, yeah, man. Is. Look at her, fucking. She's impressed. I am. Summer. She got some summer reading. Uh, Christopher uh, Cologne smells real lovely with an original idea. This is. I've never heard this before. I haven't either. This is a self-published book, much in the indie spirit as Kev's Clerks. Oh, you don't even need to name check me. This is just a good idea. You could stand on your own, man. You don't even have to be like, hey, remember Clerks? This is nothing like that. <laughs> this is way more original than Clerks. This is a good idea, man. Why didn't I think it is? I need something to read. This book is part of the Comic Books Heavy Metal Video Games Trilogy Book 2. Odd I See, A Tale from the Road, coming soon. Right on, man. It's part of a trilogy. This is the first part. Way to write, man. He's seeking a literary agent. Motherfuckers, anybody out there? There ain't no literary agents listening to this show, I assure you, sure. Sure. I assure you, sure. But somebody know a literary agent? Hook a motherfucker up! Chris Cologne come up with an original idea. I should tell Raskin. That's a good fucking idea, to be honest with you. That's a fucking rom-com right there. Megan, get Raskin on the phone. <laughs> Isn't it possible to get Raskin on the phone? No? Yeah. I want to run it past him, man. I want to, And if it happens, I get a taste, Chris Cologne. I get a, a whiff, if you will. The book could also be ordered on www.lulu.com. That's lulu.com. That's, I understand that. I just wanted to spell it out. <laughs> <laughs> Normally one says it, that spells it. Still, lulu.com. What is that? Do you know what it is? I don't know. All right. The book could also be ordered on www.lulu.com. Search for Double Jackpot Christopher Cologne. A paperback version of the book is $15, and a PDF file is only 5 bucks. $5 is yeah. insanely inexpensive. 15 is not even that bad for a hard, for a paperback version. No. This is a million dollar idea right here. Like a, a fucking a movie about a dude who fucking is stuck between two chicks, both of who play his birthday and win the lottery. Come on! I Come, like I it. can see that trailer. Chris Cologne is on to something. Nobody else can smell it but me. I'll read it. Thank you. I'm going to make that smelly joke. I know. Out. You're trying to get me to laugh again. It worked once. <laughs> Double Jackpot is a self-published book by Chris Cologne, man. It's the first book in his comic books, heavy metal video games trilogy. Book two, Odd I See, A Tale from the Road, should be coming out soon. Get all the information. Chris Cologne, like a motherfucker, and his totally book, read this. Double Jackpot. I'm serious. I'm going to recommend that to fucking Raskin. That's, how is that not a movie? You know what I'm saying? This could be a sexy movie. You could do an R-rated version. There could be nudie in it. and You could sell them fucking both chicks. Maybe a little penetration. Maybe a butthole shot. No butthole, no care. I would like to formally apologize to Christopher Cologne. Right no, now, sex but... sells. <laughs> Chris Cologne will appreciate that. He's like, thanks for throwing a few buttholes in there, man. Don't forget to check out two strangers one podcast.net, your one stop resource for everything show related. You can find links to subscribe to us on iTunes or on Stitcher. You could also find links to buy my book, Double Jackpot, on two strangers one podcast.net. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, you 
cool. And fuck you, I'm out. <laughs>